The main story is at 7 on this Monday. Michael Joseph becomes the country's newest senator and junior minister following swearing-in ceremony at Government House. Accused in MP Asset Michael's murder, Alex de Francis remanded to prison following first court appearance. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown leads the country's delegation to the crucial COP29 summit in Azerbaijan. And inmates at His Majesty's prison shine at UE5 Islands campus's lifelong learning unit. Those are the main stories at 7. The news in detail starts right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. The ABS Evening News Monday begins now. Thank you so much for joining us, and a special welcome to those joining us on our various online platforms. My name is Garfield Burford. Good evening to one and all. I am Patrice Martin. We begin with the news this evening that ABLP caretaker for St. John's Rule West, Michael Joseph, is now a member of Parliament's Upper House. That's the top story that we're tracking closely. Joseph received his instrument of appointment as a senator during a swearing-in ceremony at Government House today. Senator Joseph was also sworn in as Minister of State and the Ministry of Health wellness, social transformation, and the environment. Our story about the country's newest senator and junior minister from ABS's Teresa Goodwin. I, Michael Moiga Joseph, do swear that I will faithfully bear true allegiance to his majesty. King Charles III, his heirs, successors, according to the law. So help me God. Senator Michael Joseph takes the oath of allegiance, oath of office, and oath of secrecy as the newest member of both the legislative and executive branches of government. Joseph succeeds Senator Samantha Marshall, who stepped down last Friday after serving as a junior minister in the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and Social Transformation. Governor General Sir Rodney Williams says the ceremony represents a significant step in the nation's commitment to public service and adds that Joseph brings a wealth of experience, dedication to his new role. His background as a pharmaceutical entrepreneur has provided him with valuable insights into the healthcare sector, an area of paramount importance to our nation. The Rodney also encourages Senator Joseph to discharge of his duties fairly and without favor. Meanwhile, the man of the moment says while he has a lot of work ahead, he is up to the task. I appreciate the confidence that the Prime Minister and his cabinet have in me. I've tried my best to demonstrate that in the last world well, shape and of solid ways. And I think it's critical to the development of Antigua and Barbuda. The newly minted senator and a junior minister pledges to ensure that the voices and concerns of the most vulnerable are echoed in Parliament. I think that the youth boys have been in the Senate, they continue to be in the Senate, of course it's an addition for me. However, I do intend to ensure that particularly the people of St. John's Rural West, the youths of St. John's Rural West, that their voices get to the floor of the Senate. So it's specific emphasis from the area where I'm coming from. Senator Joseph shares that he is most looking forward to his role in the Ministry of Health. I'm passionate about health, as you would have heard the Governor General spoke. My entire career from 2005 is built in the health sector. I've worked, you know, managed the pharmaceutical aspect during the COVID period. I oversaw the review and research for the vaccines before they were approved. And so I have a natural passion for health in Antigua and Barbuda. Theresa Goodwin, ABS News. Teresa, thanks. And as you would have seen from those pictures, government senators were in attendance at the event to welcome their newest colleague. Some of them spoke with ABS News about what they say is Senator Joseph's expertise and commitment. Here is a good one. General Secretary of the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, Senator Mary Claire Hurst, says Senator Michael Joseph has positioned himself to be a guiding light for both the party and the government. And I saw him, he saw in today not only as a senator but as a minister of state in an area that he is quite proficient because he has served in, 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 in that area before and I'm like, extremely extremely proud of him. Michael's predecessor Senator Samantha Marshall was also beaming with pride. I think this is an excellent opportunity for him and also for persons to see the quality of individual um, that he is. Um, I've known Michael and for some time and I really got to know him 
um, when I was Minister of Social Transformation and he was the president of the Red Cross. And I'll tell you, he really, really put his best forward. Soon to be appointed leader of government business in the upper house, Senator Shinella Govaya also expresses her confidence in Michael's ability. I knew Michael outside of him even now being in active politics and I know his passion and dedication for people and uh, his leadership abilities so I have no doubt that he will do amazing things. Senator Joseph's mother Elise Richardson says she is overjoyed with the achievement of the natural born leader. He was always a leader. He was uh, anybody that know him. I don't think you would hear anybody say nothing bad about Michael. Anybody that know Michael will tell you he is he deserve what um, basically um, he receives because he has positioned himself to um, get that. Theresa Goodwin, ABS News. Meanwhile, the newly appointed Minister of State has hit the ground running. Honorable Sir Malwin Joseph introduced his junior minister to the team at the Health Ministry in St. John's this afternoon, shortly after the swearing-in ceremony at Government House. Senator Joseph says he looks forward to learning from Sir Malwin's years of expertise and is prepared to work hard to ensure the success of the ministry. Sir Malwin says the inclusion of Senator Joseph in the ministry will ensure there is conti continuing in terms of project implementation and execution. Sir Malwin also says he knows of Senator Joseph's capacity and urges all heads in the ministry to give him the requisite support. Meanwhile, Senator Joseph will meet with permanent secretaries and heads of departments in the Social Transformation Division on Tuesday. He will also chair the first planning meeting for the official funeral for slain St. Peter Member of Parliament, the Honorable Asset Michael. Meanwhile, Senator Joseph succeeds Samantha Marshall, who recently resigned from Parliament's upper house. Marshall has previously served in both houses of Parliament, as well as being a minister and a junior minister. What for me now? I don't know. I'm looking at other opportunities, as I expressed to the Prime Minister. And when I've decided what is coming my way, I will indicate accordingly. Until now, I'm just getting some rest and being able to engage again with my family at another level. So I'm taking it easy. Well, the former senator reflects on her years in public service during that interview with ABS News. I'm very happy that I was able to make a contribution at a national level. I was able to give service. I enjoyed every second of it. But I am one who loves other challenges, and so I think I want to move on to something else. Well, tune in on all ABS platforms at 8 on Wednesday of this week when the former legislator joins us for an in-depth reflection on her stint in the executive and legislative branches of government. Meanwhile, Senator Shanella Govaya will succeed former Senator Samantha Marshall as leader of government business in Parliament's upper house. Senator Govaya will also be sworn in as Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Sports and the Creative Industries during a ceremony at Government House on Friday of this week. Now, 26-year-old Alex de Francis has been remanded to prison for the murder of St. Peter Member of Parliament, the Honorable Asset Michael. It happened during a rare early court session today. Investigators say the 54-year-old MP was discovered at his Dry Hill home last Tuesday with multiple stab wounds. A doctor confirmed his death about two hours later. Police arrested Francis on Friday evening, and by Saturday, he was formally charged with murder. Francis's attorney, Leon Simister, declined to comment after the hearing, which was over before the court's regular 9 a.m. start. The next court date is set for February 5 for committal proceedings. Now, in more news from the courts today, a UPP caretaker for St. John's City West, Alistair Thomas, lost his bid to gain access to a picture list of voters from the 2023 general elections. Well, High Court Judge Justice Jan Drysdale dismissed the case this morning, ruling that protecting citizens' privacy outweighs the public interest in disclosing the voters' list. While well, the judge raised concerns that releasing the list could expose vulnerable individuals, including people with disabilities, to potential identity theft, stalking, and harassment. She's also, she also says such a move could shake public trust in the voting process, possibly discouraging some from participating in future elections over fears that their personal information could be made public. Attorneys for the Electoral Commission and the Attorney General's Office argued successfully that the voters' list, including pictures and sensitive details, 
is for election day workers only. Well, Thomas's argument for transparency in public trust were not enough to sway the court. In other developments this evening, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown is leading Antiguan Barbuda's high-level delegation to the 29th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or COP29. The team arrived in Baku, Azerbaijan, for the opening of the crucial meeting, which is set to run until November 22. A primary goal of the conference is to establish a new collective, quantified goal on climate finance, aimed at mobilizing resources for enhanced climate adaptation and resilience in vulnerable regions. It is also set to increase the current $100 billion annual pledge. Accompanying Prime Minister Brown, our Deputy Permanent Representative of Antigua and Barbuda to the United Nations, Tomasi Blair. Climate Change Ambassador Rulita Camacho, Director of the Department of Environment, Diane Black Lane, Technical Experts from the Department of Environment, and AOSIS Fellow Carlin Knight are all in attendance. Antigua and Barbuda will reinforce the need for innovative and equitable financial solutions to address the climate crisis. The country will also advocate for strengthened international cooperation to promote a low-carbon, sustainable future. Of course, Rasta Schroeder will keep you across the developments as they unfold from Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, certainly in relation to the push by this country and other small island developing states for the full operationalization of the loss and damage fund. Much more, of course, in terms of the Prime Minister and other members of the delegations, their various engagements in Baku. In other news this evening, and the public should expect to see night crews patching roads by later this month. Well, that was the commitment given by Director of Public Works, Alden Crump, during an interview with ABS News last month. Now, that interview had preceded an ultimatum from the Prime Minister for him to shape up or else. Prime Minister Honorable Gaston Brown has made it clear it will be the end of the road for the Director of Public Works, Alden Crump, unless significant improvements are made within 60 days. One of the sources of the Prime Minister's frustrations, the arrangement for night crews has not yet gotten off the ground. The Prime Minister said Public Works was tardy in following up, despite approval being granted for the employment of 40 additional individuals for this purpose. A few months ago, we asked him, OK, yeah, these people are now employed, maybe not all 40, but probably at least 30. Hmm. Why don't you put them in different crews now and get them to work and start the, um, the night crew? Yeah. Oh, they have to be trained. I have to train them. You don't understand, you know, comrade leader. This is a science and you have to train them. The aim for the arrangement regarding night crews is to expedite road repairs while causing minimal traffic disruptions. I had raised that issue of night crews with Mr. Crump during my interview on October 23. I haven't seen any night crews. Have they been deployed yet? No. Why not? We recently did interviews. Persons have been um, identified. And now we're going to break them up into, into crews. Then they'll have to have some period of training. So what we're going to initially do maybe is have them, those crews, attached to the day crews until they get at least some on-the-job training. And then we'll be able to start deploying them. But it stands, we just can't take them from the street and then put them to work. However, given the fierce urgency of now, I had asked Mr. Crump during that interview when these crews would be deployed. We're hoping very short, or perhaps before this is October, the end of the month, to be able to roll out some sort of crew, especially as it pertains to um, doing work in the St. John's area. In with, the night? In the night. You with, say before the end of October, because just, uh, this is the 23rd of the month, so we have just about a week now. Week to go. Well, let's say, let's say by somewhere in November, right? give some time for them to get some training, um, get additional equipment that they're going to be required because um, typically they're going to need, um, they'll need equipment that I don't have as yet. He says these night teams will be primarily focused on patching work. So I promised by Mr. Crump that the night teams will be rolled out this month. But in light of the Prime Minister's recent public comments, it's clear there will be even more scrutiny on his department as this will be where the rubber hits the road.
More news this evening as the Agriculture Ministry is intensifying its efforts to ensure sustainable land management. It is doing so through capacity building training focused on land degradation, neutrality and advanced technology tools. Shana Keisha Francis has our report on the event at the Inland Revenue Department. The Ministry of Agriculture is advancing its efforts in sustainable land management with a week-long capacity building training on land degradation, neutrality, and Google Map Earth engine tools. So the idea with this training is to show um, all the experts that are here no, novel tools based on cloud computing that can be used to improve their monitoring of the land and make better decisions for land sustainable development. The project builds on earlier soil sampling and mapping conducted in Antigua and supports the ministry's broader goal of modernizing agriculture and water infrastructure. Antigua and Barbuda is a part of the, the CARIFORM member states which are benefiting from this particular initiative. And we, as it relates to land degradation and neutrality, Antigua and Barbuda's agriculture is taking a turn to modernization, meaning that we are trying to improve the use of technologies, um, identify the best lands for production, and also to develop our water infrastructure. The training, which incorporates cloud-based tools like Google Earth Engine, is designed to enhance land monitoring for better decision-making in agriculture and resource management. Main facilitator of the initiative, UNFAO consultant Cesar Garcia, further explains the focus of the training. How to use all the, the data that was collected by Antigua. There, there's been a intensive soil sampling to produce new soil maps to aid agricultural lands. And then we will have a second part of the session where we are going to learn how to use satellite image and cloud computing to make even better maps of our, our lands our, and resources. Participants will learn how to analyze soil data, including parameters like soil carbon, pH, and conductivity, and apply satellite imagery to improve land use and conservation efforts. Shanakisha Francis, ABS News. Thanks so much, Shanakisha. Let's stay with more news about the Agriculture Ministry, because in an ABS News update, the Antigua Black Pineapple Project is progressing well. Now, over the past three weeks, several 5,000, or they actually 5,000 black pineapple tissue cultured plantlets have been monitored and evaluated. The technical activities have been undertaken by the Inter American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, or AICA, in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Caribbean Agriculture Research Development Institute, CARDI and other partners. A survival rate of 85% has been recorded during the three weeks since the plants were transferred to the nursery. Now, after weaning and hardening, the plantlets will be transplanted to the Cades Bay Pineapple Station between January and February of next year. The 1.2 acre of land designated for these pineapple plantlets at the Cades Bay Pineapple Station has already been prepared. The installation of the drip irrigation system has begun and is expected to be completed by the end of this month, along with the installation of a plastic mulch system. Now, a second batch of 5,000 tissue cultured Antigua black pineapple plantlets is also expected to arrive in the country by the beginning of next month and will be managed by Cardi. Now this evening, one family is saying thanks to the Calvin Air Foundation for its generosity in helping their loved one navigate difficult times. With that story, here's Terry Andrew. Wong, as he is the latest beneficiary of the Calvin Air Foundation's crucial support to residents here on island. In early August of this year, Wong faced urgent health challenges and had to be admitted to Medical Surgical Associates under the care of Dr. Sir Joseph John. Jake's sister, Mandy Wong, underscored the importance of her brother receiving help at this crucial time. In a very critical state, he was not breathing properly, none of that. Um, and Dr. John and his team at Medical Surgical Associates went ahead and you know, started the care for him and started working on a diagnosis as to why Jake was you know, in such a bad condition. We, we reached out to the Calvin Air Foundation for assistance and they got on board with um, Mr. Calvin Air and Mr. Miller. 
and we are so thankful for the Calvinier Foundation and the resources and how they've just gone above and beyond um, to allow us to you know have Jake in, in Dr. John's care and his facility so that he could just really get the critical the care that he needed. The foundation supported Jake's medical care for three months. Dr. John recognizes the importance of the gesture by the Calvinia Foundation. He uh, underwent a tremendous amount of care with us over the last few months and I am happy to be able to report that he's now stabilized and uh, we are at this point transferring him to Guyana for further management. Guyana is where he's from. Um, this was a terribly complex and difficult case and it is very important for me to applaud the efforts of the Calvinia Foundation who uh, generously donated immense resources and concern and care also in uh, allowing us to get to this juncture. Upon Dr. John's advice for the family to seek specialized care, the foundation has arranged for Jake to be transported via air ambulance to Guyana. With the assistance, there is no certainty for the Wong family and a fresh dose of hope during this difficult time. Terry Andrew, ABS News. More medical news as well-known media personality Paul Quinn remains in the intensive care unit at the Celeste Bird Medical Center. Quinn's family provided an update explaining that neurologist Dr. Gaden Osborne met with them on Monday morning. Dr. Osborne is consulting with neurosurgeon Dr. Patrick Knight, a specialist in brain and spine surgery based in Trinidad, to determine how soon a crucial surgery can be performed. The family also shared that Quinn received a special visit from Governor General Sir Rodney Williams and Lady Williams earlier on Monday. Sir Rodney, a friend and fellow grammarian, offered his support during the visit. Quinn's family continues to ask for prayers during this challenging time. Now the news now, 14 inmates at His Majesty's Prison are making major strides in education thanks to the lifelong learning unit at the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus. Among them was the valedictorian of the recent graduation ceremony for the lifelong learning unit. The inmates have been speaking to our Rihanna Anthony. Despite their challenging circumstances, these individuals have embraced the opportunity to upskill themselves, proving that it's never too late to seek knowledge and change one's future. Meet top student Kenisha White. She shares what motivated her as well as her future goals. My support from the other students here at the prison. It's something that they wanted for me more than I wanted it for myself. And I felt like I just couldn't let them down. Being in the prison, participating in these courses, volunteering, doing the volunteer work, it makes me now feel like I have a bigger purpose. So. Future-wise, while I'm still going to be in business, I think I'll definitely have to do some charitable work, give back, maybe open my own foundation one day. With the support of UWE's dedicated faculty and staff, inmates have been able to pursue courses that range from literacy and numeracy to personal development, all aimed at equipping them with tools needed for a better life. Meet Dorian, Kaiser, Corian, and Kenroy. They share why they undertook courses and their 10-week experience at the program. In my lifetime, I'll always be a leader. And I have intentions to go outside and maintain that skills to be a leader and keep pushing ahead. The 10 weeks was sufficient enough because um, Mr. Shaquille Henry, he, he pushed us a lot in terms of you know, making sure that we, we he even um, gave us time after class to, you know, articulate a little bit more to make sure that we understood everything that... It has helped me out a lot in terms of boosting my confidence, knowing that I can go out and actually be um, a good member of society again. When they see I went for my um, certificate, I had to look and say, boy, look here, even though I'm in prison, and here achieving one of the greatest achievements at the University of the West Indies, Five Island Campus. Inmates who have benefited from their studies are now encouraging others to pursue their own educational journeys. I've been incarcerated from since I was 21 to 37. Now I'm 37. I've been free for seven months of my life. Because of that situation, I now understand that education is the key. 
education continues and you're never too old to get yourself educated so stay away from crime one place for the for the crime is death or prison and i wasted a lot of my time 15 years in prison i could have been using that to do something else crime not really nice for nobody education is the key better for just follow your own mind through discipline small steps can result in large positive outcomes brianna anthony for abs news in other national news, special notices, special notices issued to motorists and the general public of the total closure of the Sir Sydney Wallen Highway from Monday, November 18 to Monday, December 2, 2024. The closure will begin at the big culvert between the east end of Piers Village and Collins Junction. Vehicles traveling eastwards beyond Piers Village will be diverted southwards or right onto the Potworks Dam Junction, then left onto Collins. Those traveling westward will divert left onto the Collins Junction, then right and proceed to Potworks Dam to regain access. CO Williams expects the reopening of Sir Sydney Wallen Highway to single lane traffic in both directions after December 2. Notice will be given at a later date. The company apologizes for the inconvenience caused and invites queries to their office by telephone on 562-9573. This road work forms part of the second road infrastructure rehabilitation project through the government of Antigua and Barbuda. More national news on the other side of this break, including this one. The Antigua and Barbuda Hotels and Tourism Association continues to shine the spotlight on professionals within the industry. We share more of that in our national developments after this break. And later on, how music is being used to guide young people away from antisocial behavior. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News on air and online with Sunday Space. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. People of Antigua and Barbuda. Yes. Land of sun and sea. True. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. For the craziest sale that was revealed to me. Okay. The words Bogo. Bogo. Bogo El Vajo sale. What that means? Buy one item, get one equal or lesser value at 50% off. That's 50% off all second items, people. There ain't no way. Yes, you heard right. Buy any item, get any other item equal or lesser value for 50%. 50% off. Remember, the more you buy, the greater your chances of winning a brand new Suzuki motor car. Honey car! Greatest savings, massive discounts, and ridiculously low prices at Townhouse Megastore, your home superstore. Product exclusions apply. See store for details. West Trading has a brand new face. With over 2,000 household and home improvement items, we have everything you need. Visit us today in Casada Gardens or call 462-9425 and come see the new face of West Trading. Win big in the ACB season of joy and rewards. Oh, joy, joy, joy and rewards. It's the season to enter and win what's yours. Have your loan payments wiped away for a year. Bringing the joy of Christmas to you. Big prizes to win with a holiday cheer. To make your Christmas wish come true. We know that you're ready for the holidays with the
terms and conditions apply. Hey, what's up, guys? Sky's Media TV here. We're going to be giving away $100 to anyone who can spell these three. Excuse me. How are you? Hi. How would you like to win $100 today? How you mean? Let's go. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to spell three words. If you get one out of the three correct, you win $100. All right. All right. So the first question I'm going to ask you to spell is detergent. B-R-E-E-Z-E. -E -E. Detergent. No, that, that's not right. Okay, let's try another one. Spell toothpaste. Okay. C-O-L-G-A-T-E. <laughs> Yo, you can't, you can't spell tall. Uh, what school did us go? Okay, no one answer that. Final word. Spell paint. That easy. N-O-R-T-H-C-O-A-S-T. Antigua Paints North Coast Hardware, when we think paint. Get up to 30% off paint at the nation's paint store. You can find great joy in the twinkle of their eyes when the magic of Christmas brings with it a big prize. This Christmas, you can win prizes every week. Plus, get a chance to win a grand prize of new kitchen appliances when you sign up for any new flow service, activate a 30-day prepaid mobile plan, or pay your bill in full and on time. Sign up, activate, or pay to win today. Christmas is really Christmasing at Flow. Sign up or pay up in-store or online at discoverflow.co or visit Top of Flow com to activate your prepaid combo plan today. Make home yours every day with cards. Everything you want. Make home yours anytime with cards. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Get value for your money. Cards have the best quality. Home is what you make it. Best prices and good credit. Cards have it all. Home is what you make it. Top brands, you're sure to get it all. Courts have it all. Courts has what you need to make home yours. You can get it all with easy payment plans using Courts Ready Finance. Courts, make home yours. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us here into the ABS Evening News on air and online. More national news. The Antigua Barbuda Hotels and the Tourism Association, the ABHTA, shines the spotlight on Alicia Ward in this, uh, this week's Unveiling Hospitality Professionals series. The ABHTA brings her inspiring journey from media professional to her role in the hospitality industry. Ward, who has a first-class honors bachelor's degree in journalism, has served in prominent institutions such as Observer Media Group and ABS Television Radio. She's now bringing her knowledge to the hospitality sector in communications and events planning and has since attained a certification in wedding and events design, wedding planning, consulting, and coordinating. In 2018, she joined the team at the Mill Reef Club, where she continues to deliver exceptional service. She has so far coordinated over 200 private events and 14 wedding celebrations. She consistently creates memorable experiences for guests and club members alike. Ward attributes her success to the supportive team at the Mill Reef Club, including her mentor, Reverend Dr. Claire Halsborough, and former managing director, Mr. Daniel Brown. Now, the power of music to guide young people toward uplifting activities is being harnessed in one area of the country this evening. ABS's Kilisha Humphreys talks to one trainer on how music shifts youth attention from negative influences. Instructor at the C4 Music Program in Otto's, Jerome Walkie Joseph, like many, is of the belief that music education is a great way to steer youth away from delinquency. prevent you from going on the corner, right? And hang out and cause a problem. Music is love. However, he says music is only one part of the equation. I, I let them know, if you're not doing well in school, don't worry, come here. A matter of fact, I reach as far as telling them they might have to bring their report card. Just as how you pay attention in school to your teacher, I need to do the same thing here. You know, and they, you know, they fall in line. Joseph has been using the approach for some time and has had a hand in the music education of several local artists. Raining, the raining party monarch, 
Young Voice, the one who came second runner up, Kid Fresh, Kiante, and a lot of the members in the band, Caution, New Gen, High Voltage, I train all of them as kids. Among his present students are a group of young people who were first introduced to music and their instruments in February. calls itself Ant's Nest Folklip, AFK, and Joseph says he has big plans for them. I'll be having a tutor, one or two tutors come in here to tutor the kids. I don't want him to stay at the jam band stuff only. I want him to play different style of music. I want him to play Brazilian style of music. I want him to play Afro-Cuban Afro style of music, North American like the swing and stuff like that. Um, these kids, they're, they're young. They're the age between nine right now, nine and 13. Hilly Shamfries, ABS News. Alicia, thanks. We certainly wish them all the best indeed. Turning our attention to the weather report and forecast as Leonard Josiah is here to tell us whether or not uh, those cloudy conditions and intermittent rainfall will continue. Good evening to you, Leonard. Good evening to you, Gaffey. Good evening to you, Patrice. Good evening to you, Antigua and Barbuda. Yeah, challenging month of November. Last time I was with you, I was forecasting a little bit more of the showers. Uh, yeah, more clouds than anything. And the month of November continues to give us the dry low levels. But take a look at that blob of clouds. It becomes the next area to watch for Jamaica and the Western Caribbean islands. Oh boy, month of November has given us so much to talk about. Stay with us, I'll tell you more when we return. The weather report is brought to you by Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection. When the skies are clear and the winds are calm, we often forget how unpredictable Mother Nature can be. But when a hurricane strikes, it's the strength of your home that matters most. Whether you are preparing for your first storm or looking to upgrade your current protection, Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection has got you covered. Our expert team handles everything from custom design to professional installation, ensuring your home is as strong as it is beautiful. Call today for a free consultation. Leeward Islands Hurricane Protection, built strong to weather any storm. Thanks for staying with us. The amount of tropical sick uh, cyclones that the western parts of the region has churned up for, the, um, uh, for this year is astounding. And yet is another area for us to watch. The National Hurricane Center is suggesting a 50% chance of some development coming out of this particular area as it moves on towards the west. So the western half of the region definitely will have to pay closer attention to that area. But closer to home, you woke up, to uh, you woke up this morning on the canopy of clouds again a trophy system merging with this particular area and a frontal trophy right here moisture content of the atmosphere and instability was also high now it is moving towards the west and a lot of these clouds and moisture will be moving away from the island to change some drier atmospheric conditions is on the march towards our islands and with that the high pressure system will at least curb the cloudiness and the shower activity at least for the next 48 hours. So in terms of your forecast, we can say it like this. We're going to be looking at decreasing clouds tonight, mostly cloudy skies in the evening, but better conditions as we go on into tomorrow. We're looking at an overnight low of 23 or 73. Then you're waking up tomorrow morning at 6, 10, 5, 5.32 in the afternoon with when the sun will set. But then tomorrow morning, we're looking at generally partly cloudy skies. A moderate chance of a morning shower. The morning temperatures are 30, 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Then comes your winds out of the east to southeast on an average of 11 miles an hour. Then tomorrow afternoon, we're looking at generally better conditions going on into tomorrow afternoon. And we're looking at our high temperatures peaking as high as 33 or 91. A slight chance of an afternoon shower again with east southeasterly winds just at about 11 miles an hour. Let's put it all together. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and on 
Friday, 40% chance of a shower on Tuesday. But then Wednesday, better conditions on Wednesday. Then on Thursday and on Friday, another trough system uh, com comes in. Take a look at your winds because that is going to be a major factor. East South Eastly at 10 miles an hour, but they'll drop right off right here. And it gives us some chance for what we call daytime localized convective activity. And we're likely to see some afternoon showers and possibly some thunderstorms in, in, um, in isolated spots. Then come the trophiness on Thursday and on Friday. Take a look at your warmer daytime temperatures. Again, days are getting uh, shorter, but yet still your temperatures are on the high with a cooler temperature in the night. Yeah, yeah. we're going to be forecasting cooler temperatures in the night. And with the winds uh, will come, let's say, the sea conditions here. Swells, swells. You're not seeing anything here. It's not a mistake. Swells again. And why I'm doing this? Because these swells here are going to be giving you high surf on the northern flanks of Antigua and Barbuda. Not necessarily good waters for sea bathing on the northern side. A high surf advisory goes into effect tonight, or high surf warning, sorry, goes into effect tonight. Better conditions going on into the next couple of days. So we're going to be giving you uh, the, the forecast summary that goes like this, a reduction in moisture and instability will result in improving conditions, but light winds could lead to localized showers in the next couple of days. Another trough on Thursday, sea conditions are building tonight, hazardous conditions for the beach goers, not necessarily friendly waters. And if you're on the outside, remember to send us a pic or a video to abmsiwatch at gmail.com. And that's all the way weather to weather your weather. Garfield? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Al, and I really appreciate it. And of course, we'll monitor very closely what's happening not only here in the Eastern Caribbean, but across the dark uh, Caribbean as well. Thank you so much, Leonard. Really appreciate it. Good night. Leonard Josai, making sure that we are your weather headquarters. Uh, the Met Office, we thank them for their extraordinary industry on this matter.